So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to conduct a Will Coxon signed ranked test on version 29 of SPSS. So this test assumes that we have a within participants categorical variable and we have a ordinal or continuous dependent variable. So this is one of the things that distinguishes the Wilcoxon test from the paired samples t-test is that we can actually use this test with ordinal data whereas the paired t-test requires that we have continuous data. Also this test doesn't make any sort of assumptions about normality which the paired samples t-test does. So for this example we're going to imagine that we're interested in how symptom scores differ before and after a treatment. So in my Excel file here, we have one column representing the symptom severity scores before treatment and another representing the symptom severity scores after treatment. So let's take a look at how to put these data into SPSS. So we're gonna go down to this variable view button at the bottom. We'll click that, this takes us to variable view. And then we need to enter the name of one level of the independent variable into this top cell in the name column. So let's type before underscore treatments. We have to use an underscore or something other than a space because SPSS doesn't allow spaces. And then we'll do the same thing in the next row down. We'll give a name to the other level of the independent variable. So let's call that after treatment. And then, yeah, we can use this measure column to indicate that we have scale data. But as I mentioned before, this test can actually be done with ordinal data. So once we've done that, let's go down to data view. And we can see that these two columns now have names above them. And then we can just copy and paste the data from our Excel file into SPSS. So I'm just going to select all that data, click Command C or Control C if you're using a PC, and then Control or Command V to paste that data in. So once we've done that, we're ready to run the analysis. So we can go to Analyze and then down to Non-Parametric Tests, then across to Legacy Dialogues, and then to Two Related Samples. That opens this two related samples tests window, and then we can just transfer one level of the independent variable over using this button, this arrow button, and then transfer the other one over. We can see that we have Will Coxon ticked already. And if we click options, we can also select this quartiles button here, then go to continue and then to okay. Okay, so we can see that the median before treatment scores are six. And we can see that the median after treatment scores are three. So we have higher symptom severity before treatment compared to after treatment, suggesting that our imaginary treatment is effective for minimizing whatever symptom we are looking at. And we can also look at this test statistics table where we can see in this row here that we have a p-value of less than 0.05 so in this case, it's less than 0.001, indicating that we have a significant effect of treatment on symptom severity. So let's take a look at how we can report those results. So here's an example. I've just said, a Wilcoxon signed ranked test revealed that symptom scores were significantly, significantly lower after the intervention compared to before. And then in parentheses, I've added median scores uh, so we've got median equals three for after the in intervention. So as we looked, as we saw before, we have a, a median score of three here. Um, and compared to before the intervention, we have a median score of six here. And I've also just included these values here, which indicate how many participants we had. So N equals 20. Uh, the next thing I've reported is this Z value. So that just comes from this test statistics table. So 3.749, I've just rounded that to 3.75. And then as we saw before, we've got this P value of less than 0 0.001, which comes from here. Lastly, we have this 
uh, effect size value, so there's an R value, and I've said that we have a large effect, and the R value isn't actually provided by SPSS, but we can calculate this ourselves by taking the Z value and then dividing that by the square root of 40. So 40 is the, the number of observations. So if you don't have a calculator, you can just enter uh, this formula into Google and that will produce the answer for you. So that's pretty much it for the results. Um, if you're interested in how to represent these results graphically, let's take a little look at how we might do that. So we can go up to graphs and then we can go to charts builder. We'll just click OK. And then we're going to transfer this bar here. Uh, so we had bar selected here. Then I just transferred the simple bar option into the window. I'm going to transfer before treatment to the y-axis box and then after treatment to the same box. This opens this window. We can just click OK to close that. And then we can just click OK to create this graph. So this creates this, this graph and uh, we can just double click on that to open this chart editor. We might like to change some things. So we'll double click on these bars. This opens the properties window. We can go to bar options and we can change the width using this thing. If we move it to the left, we'll get some skinny bars. So we'll do that. We'll click apply. That makes those a lot thinner. Uh, if we go to the left of this, we get the fill and border option where we can change the color. So if we click this gray, for example, then apply, we get a, a gray color for our bars instead. Some aspects of this we, of this figure we probably don't want because we can just add them within the Word document um, of our report. So if I just click on this, I don't really want this. Um, I'll click backspace and that removes that. And if we click on any element once and then again, it allows you to edit what is written so we can remove these underscores. And we can um, click on any bit of writing to change the size of the font and the style of the font. So we might want to use the font that is used within our reports. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman and this is quite hard to read at the moment. So I'm just going to increase the size of that to about 16 and then click apply. And we can see that that is much easier to read now. And then any changes that we do make within this chart editor are saved automatically. So we we can just click this red button whenever we are ready. And that will update what the charts looks like within our SPSS output file. So that is essentially it for the Wilcoxon sign drag test. If you have any questions, let me know and I will try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.